Dear Christ Central, it is God who calls us to worship him this morning. Hear the words now of Psalm 40. I waited patiently for the Lord. He inclined to me and heard my cry. He drew me up from the pit of destruction out of the miry bog and set my feet upon a rock, making my steps secure. He put a new song in my mouth, a song of praise to our God. Many will see and fear and put their trust in the Lord. Sing this again. Sing, bless the Lord, O oh my soul. Bless the Lord, O oh my soul. O oh my soul. Worship His holy name. Sing like never before. O oh my soul, I worship Your holy name. The sun comes up, the sun comes up, it's a new day dawning, it's time to sing your song again, whatever may pass and whatever lies before me, let me be singing when the Lord. And bless the Lord, oh my soul, oh my soul, worship His holy name, sing like never before, oh my soul, I worship Your holy name. Sing so rich in love. Every week in our worship, we take a time to come before the Lord. It's a called confession and pardon. And in our confession, this is a time 
of awareness. We come into God's presence and the spotlight of God's holiness is upon us, where every stain and every blemish that was hidden in darkness is now seen. And instead of hiding, we come before the Holy One and know that we are received and heard. So during the times when evil and oppression had come before Israel, in Isaiah 59 verse 12 it says, For our transgressions are multiplied before you, and our sins testified against us. For our transgressions are with us, and we know our iniquities. May I invite you to take this time with me to confess our sins before the Lord. Let's pray. In that same chapter of Isaiah 59, verse 16, it says, He saw there was no man and wondered that there was no one to intercede. Then his own arm brought him salvation and his righteousness upheld him. That mighty one who would come to intercede, his name was Jesus, and it is by his name that we are forgiven. May you, re may you now receive his pardon. Before the throne of God above, before the throne of God above, I have a strong and perfect plea, a great high priest whose name is love, whoever lives and pleads for me. My name is graven on his hands, my name is written on his heart I know that while in heaven he stands no tongue can bid me dance depart no tongue can bid me dance depart when Satan tempts when Satan tempts me to despair and tells me of the guilt within upward I look and see him there who made an end of all my sin because a sinless Savior died my sinful soul is counted free for God the just is satisfied to look on him and on him and pardon me. And hallelujah, hallelujah, praise the one, the risen Son of God. See, behold him there. Behold him there, the Perfect spotless righteousness, the great unchangeable I am, the King of glory and of grace. One with himself, I cannot die. My soul is purchased by his blood. My life is hid with Christ on high. My Savior and my God, with Christ my Savior and my God, Hallelujah. 
Christ Central, good morning to you. It's a great joy to be together online once again. We've been going through the book of James. We're just going to begin with one verse, James chapter 5, verse 13. We're going to launch from here. So if you follow along in your Bibles, please, let's look at James chapter 5, verse 13. I'll read this for us. Is anyone among you suffering? Let him pray. Is anyone cheerful? Let him sing praise. This is God's word. Thanks be to God. So far, the Apostle James has been teaching that beliefs, beliefs, all by themselves do not automatically save or change you. The same author has already told us that even demons believe in God. They can quote proper and precise theology. Even in the presence of God, demons can have emotional reactions and shudder. But you will never find demons singing praise to God. Demons will never sing in worship to God because they have no love for God. Their lives remain unchanged. One of the greatest themes that James is trying to get across is that real saving faith changes lives. Real saving faith changes lives. How does this happen? Well, first, by hearing and doing the word of God. Second, it's by singing, as we're going to learn today, next week, by praying. Well, let's just focus our attention today on this one verse. James urges us to sing, sing praise to God. Got five questions, just five questions. The last question we're going to ask twice in different ways. But the first question we want to ask is why? Why sing? Well, it's because the Bible is chock full of singing and making music for the glory and worship of God. Uh, When the pastoral staff and myself were discussing in this monumental, unprecedented transition to worshiping online, Uh, we had to consider what are the most essential parts of worship service to God. And singing, of course, is a no-brainer. Singing wasn't just included, but we all felt and believed from the scriptures that it is one of the most paramount acts. Well, the songbook of the entire Old Testament is the book of Psalms. If you could turn to Psalm 147, verse 1 at this time. Psalm 147, verse 1, also be projected right here. It reads, Praise the Lord, for it is good to sing praises to our God, for it is pleasant and a song of praise is fitting. Why sing? Because it is good to praise our God, and it is good for you. It is not only good to sing praise for the glory and the worship of God, but it is also good for you and for me. C.S. Lewis once observed, as he observes so many things better than most of us, quote, praising is something we can't help doing about everything else we value. I think we delight to praise what we enjoy because the praise not merely expresses but completes the enjoyment. It is its appointed consummation. So why praise? Because it is good to sing praise for the glory and worship of God, but also it is good for you and for me. Praise completes, it consummates the enjoyment over that which we value. Second question. First was why, second, when? When should we sing? The Bible reveals to us that there was music. Uh, There was melody, complexity, and harmony. There was sublime poetry and singing at creation. I firmly believe that there was music and singing before and at the moment of all of creation. This means it promises and points forward to a new heavens and new earth, which is going to be very musical. Very musical. James chapter 5, verse 13, our passage for today. 
if you're cheerful, if you find reasons to give praise to God, please, it is a command, put that in singing, put that into praise. So when we're cheerful and happy and blessed and there's 10,000 reasons we can find, I think on any given day, we are called and commanded to give praise to God. Well, also in Psalm 46, verses 1, 2, and 3, which is displayed for you here, it reads, God is our refuge and strength, a very present help in trouble. Therefore, we will not fear, though the earth gives way, though the mountains be moved into the heart of the sea, though its waters roar and foam, though the mountains tremble at its swelling. James chapter 5, 13 tells us to sing when we're cheerful. Psalm 46 tells us you ought to still sing and give praise in great distress and disappointment. Might be oh, 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 overwhelmed by worry or fear. Even literally when the mountains are crashing or crumbling into the seas. So when should Christians sing? Christians sing at all times. All times. There was singing at the inception of creation. There will be singing throughout all of creation. And until the end of time, and even after the end of time, singing will continue to the praise and the glory of God. Oh, the apostles, they sang even while in prison. First question we asked is why. Second was when. Third, what? What? Now, what happens in singing? I think the scriptures do reveal to us that if you are weak or wavering, or you feel like you're lacking in faith, you should sing. If you feel robust, you're on a high, your faith is in sky high, that's what you feel like it's like, you should still sing. Of course you should sing. What happens in singing? Well, faith is born and built in singing the very words of God. John Calvin, that great theologian, in his Institutes of the Christian Religion, he argued the reason why God asks us to sing praises to him is that it fixes our attention, it lifts our gaze upward to God, and it excites our affections and singing praise to God is of immense supernatural value. John Calvin, believe taken from the scriptures. Bono, the lead singer of U2. Oh, some of you at this point right away said, how dare you juxtapose John Calvin and Bono? Oh, get over it. Bono, here's what he once observed. Psalms and hymns were my first taste of inspirational music. Words and music did for me what solid, even rigorous religious argument could never do. They introduced me to God, not belief in God, but an experiential sense of God. Over art, literature, reason, the way into my spirit was a combination of words and music. You see, my dear family at CCSA, knowing what can happen in singing praise to God, the vision of our worship ministry right here is to pursue continual biblical excellence in both our lyrics and musical expressions. Knowing what happens and can happen in singing praise to God in worship, we don't get to randomly pick the songs. We have to check if it's lyrical we should consider if it's biblical. We should know that it's paramount if it's truthful, truthful. The songs we sing in praise to God prepare for and illumine and cause us to respond to the very words of God or else they are just distracting. If your life and my life is in large measure shaped by the songs we hear and sing, then biblical truths should be sung most. 
That's the what. What happens in singing? The Holy Spirit can take the very truths of God and impress them upon your souls so that they become most valuable, precious, and true experientially to your hearts. Fourth question. So how should we sing? We ask the why, we ask the when, we've asked the what, fourth, how. How to sing. We should sing not only truthfully or biblically, but beautifully. <laughs> I just watched our worship team rehearse and kind of taken aside, blown away by the gifting and the beauty that God has given to our team so that they could lead us in singing of praise to God. Psalm chapter 33, verses 2 and 3. I know this is projected, but it's always better if you have your Bibles so that you can turn there, flip there with me. Psalm 33, verses 2 and 3. Here the psalmist says, Give thanks to the Lord with the lyre. Make melody to him with the harp of ten strings. Sing to him a new song. Play skillfully on the strings with loud shouts. Sing and play skillfully. Excellently. Beautifully. Do it well. For it teaches, uplifts, and blesses all those in its hearing. I don't know if you're getting used to worshiping together on Sundays, online. I hope you don't get too used to it. I don't think I ever will. But at 10 a.m. last Sunday, my wife, Sunny, picked up a golden microphone to sing along with the singing of songs in worship. And I must admit to you, my wife has a very pleasant, I think a very pretty tone to her voice. Her musical expression is, it's adorable. But lyrically, even with the words displayed on screen, she just goes off the rails. I don't know why. I think she's too expressive. She's a little bit too spacey. Maybe she doesn't pay attention to all the words. Now, you're looking at a person who usually would get all the lyrics right. But my musical expression, my musical delivery... Uh, could probably destroy your faith in God. See, we need both. We need both. Lyrical truthfulness and musical expressiveness. Excellence in both. And that's why we are called to sing together. Thank God. Thank God we're not doing some individual solo act Sunday after Sunday. All great music, all beautiful singing are common grace gifts from God and they are pointers to God. All great music, beautifully done, are actually gifts from God, and they point back to its ultimate and divine author. It was reported that when Steve Jobs was ill, Yo-Yo Ma showed up with his 1733 Stradivarius cello and played in his living room. And Steve Jobs was moved to tears. And he told Yo-Yo Ma, this is the best argument I've ever heard for the existence of God. Because I really don't believe a human being could do this alone. As promised, Yo-Yo Ma played at his 2011 funeral for Steve Jobs. But all beautiful music and singing well done is only a gift from God but can point us to God. Anne Lamott, in a book entitled Traveling Mercies, describes her life amidst the cocaine binges and the alcoholism and hooking up at motels that she could not bear to listen to a sermon, but it was the music wafting out from a church that was so pretty that from time to time she found herself standing at the doorway to listen in. And here's how she goes on to explain her experience. It was a singing that pulled me in and split me wide open. 
I could sing better here than I ever had before. The singing enveloped me. It was furry and resonant, coming from everyone's very heart. There was no sense of performance or judgment, only that the music was breath and food. Something inside me that was stiff and rotting would feel soft and tender. Somehow the singing wore down all the boundaries and distinctions that kept me so isolated. Sitting there, standing with them to sing, sometimes so shaky and sick that I felt like I might tip over. I felt bigger than myself, like I was being taken care of, tricked into coming back to life. What happened to Anne Lamott? The very words of God carried through the beauty and the heartfelt singing of God's people. The gospel happened to Anne Lamott. So please, friends and family at Christ Central, when you sing, you ought to sing from the heart. You ought to sing your hearts out. Because you are a one-of-a-kind instrument in the hands of God to convey and carry forth the very words of the gospel. How should we sing? Sing truthfully, but also please sing beautifully, as best as you can. Last question, who? So who do you sing for? Who do you sing for? I think plenty of people sing and write songs and record songs so that they can remember people they loved or be remembered by people they love. Who do you sing for? Billy Joel, in his lullaby to his daughter Alexa, wrote this in his final stanza. Someday your child may cry, and if you sing this lullaby then in your heart there will always be a part of me. Someday we'll all be gone, but lullabies go on and on. They never die. That's how you and I will be. A part of me will go on living in your heart, and through this lullaby, we, you and I, will never die. Some of you are thinking, who the heck is Billy Joel? Pastor, stop dating yourself. I'll give you a more current example. Remember when Mama Coco heard the song by Miguel, Remember Me, a song that her father used to sing to her. And do you remember the animated artistry, the mastery of that movie? As not only she heard the song, she began to join in the singing and you can see Mama Coco come to life, come to life. How do you and I remember and hold on to Jesus best? Even in a world like ours. All James says, of course, hear and do the word of God. Hear and do and obey the word of God. Second, we're going to hear next week, pray to him. That's utterly vital. Third, which James has not mentioned, but I will tell you as a pastor, you have to participate and engage in the sacraments by faith. But fourth, how do you remember and hold on to Jesus best? Certainly, sing the songs Jesus left behind. My friends, what do you think happens when you sing the songs that Jesus left behind for you and for me? He is remembered, and you and I get to relive and continue to live in his presence of love. Let me ask the who in a second different way, and we close. The first was we asked, who do you sing for? But I think this is more important. Who sings for you? Who sings for you? Who sings over you? I think maybe one of my greatest fears is having to sing, sing in public, a solo. And I always want someone to sing over me. Please cover my voice. <laughs> James, David, Mike, Will, Eddie, Stella, Christy, Hyung, Deborah, just to name a few. Thank you, God, for these brothers and sisters. Please drown out my voice. Sing over me, sing over me. Because my voice is no good. 
Do you know what Jesus came to do for you? He came all the way down to cover all your singing and all your sinning. As Anne Lamott said, she felt like she could never sing like this. She's never sung so freely. She never sung so loudly. She never sung so earnestly. Well, Jesus came down all the way down so that you and I can sing and live like never before. Do you hear him? Do you have ears of faith? Can you hear Jesus sing over you? How he rejoices over you? Do you know what kinds of songs he sings for you? In the courts of heaven, Jesus is leading a joyous, ecstatic chorus filled with praise to God. But at the cross, Jesus also sang the deepest and darkest and most bitterest blues. Who sings over you? Jesus sang the entire songbook over you and for you. And because Jesus sang the saddest songs, my friends, there's nobody who sang the blues better than him. He sang the saddest songs so that he could put a new song in your heart and mine. Psalm 40. A new song in my heart that will not stop. So please sing. Learn to sing from the heart. Do it your best way that you can, beautifully, for the worship and glory of God, and to bless all others and invite more family and friends in to meet Jesus. Jesus, who sings over you, and if you can hear him sing over you, your life will never be the same. Let me pray for us. Father in heaven, I thank you for my dear dear friends who are listening in. And we ask that the gospel that you have shown to us, the gospel that you continue to teach us, might erupt in songs. Holy Spirit, may we learn to sing filled by you. For your glory, for your pleasure, and oh, how good it is for us and all those who listen in. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Seems like this. Seems like there's so much to hope for. So many dreams I wish they all could come true when i think about your ways lord it gives me so much faith in all that you do faith to see beyond what i can see faith to know that you See, Lord, I'll always believe as I hold on to my faith. Jesus, you are holding on to me. Seems like this. Seems like there's so much to hold for. So many dreams I wish they all could come true. When I think about your ways, Lord, it gives me so much faith in all that you do. Faith to see, faith to see beyond what I can see, faith to know that you will do great things, and I will trust you, Lord, I'll I hold on to my faith, Jesus, 
As I hold on to my faith, Jesus, you are holding on to me. When I fear my faith fail, Christ will hold me fast. When the tempter would prevail, he will hold me fast. And I could never keep my hold through life's fearful path. For my love is often cold, he must hold me fast. Beloved people of God, now receive the benediction. May the love of God, our Father who is in heaven, the grace of our risen Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all now and forevermore. Amen. All right. Well, good morning, everyone. My name is Jimmy, and I'm one of the pastors here at Christ Central. And we want to welcome you warmly in the name of Christ to our online worship service. If you're new, uh, we would love for you to connect with us. And if you're just checking out our church for the first time, please go to ChristCentralSC.com and fill out a connect card. If you do that, every connect card that's submitted, Christ Central will donate $10 to a local charity. And when you're filling out that connect card, it helps us to uh, connect with our community and to remind us as a church that we're not just here, but we're here with our community. Uh, When you choose, you can uh, choose which charity the donation will go to. 
So as you go, please fill one out and let us know of your visit today. When it comes to offering, uh, we just want to remind everyone that there's two ways that you could send your offering. The first one is by going online and giving at ChristCentralSA.com slash giving. The second is by texting 84321. And both ways would be really appreciated and a great way for us to continue to give to the ministry of our Lord. Now, as it comes to the announcements, uh, we have a few announcements for you. The first one is regarding the COVID-19. As you know by now, we've had to make some adjustments to the current situation because of COVID-19. And because of that, we're pausing our in-person worship services and activities here at Christ Central. And for now, we will continue our Sunday worship online. Uh, We will also be including resources for family worship and for your children as well each Sunday. We'll also be continuing our ministries online and more announcements will be coming. We want to make every effort to stay connected with all of you. And we want to do that by praying for one another and checking in on each other. And for all of our uh, members who are part of small groups, we hope you will continue to do that as you meet one another online and pray for one another together. If you're in need of prayer or support uh, during this time, please let us know. Uh, We're not just here online, but we're here praying for you. And our pastors, our elders, our staff members, uh, we'd love to continue to pray for you. Uh, You can submit a prayer request by simply going to ChristCentralSE.com slash prayer, or you can send that prayer request directly by emailing our office at office. Uh, at ChristCentralSC.com. Uh, more than ever, our Christ Central leadership desires to be available as a church, and we want to really pray for you and support you during this need. Uh, since the situation is evolving, we want to ask you to continue to please check on our website at ChristCentralSC.com slash COVID-19 for future updates and any other announcements that will be going out regarding uh, our church. The second announcement is regarding uh, Instagram Live on Wednesdays. Now, this is we've done this for two weeks, and both times have been amazing. It's been really fun. It's been light and uplifting, as well as encouraging. Um, Pastor Harold and our pastoral staff would love to stay connected with you through Instagram Live, and we hope that many of you uh, have tuned in in the past Wednesdays. This past Wednesday, Pastor Harold and Pastor Daniel Dinko uh, was live on Instagram, and if you were there, you would have found out why we call Pastor Daniel Dinko. It was a great story to hear. If you missed it, sorry. Um, The next one coming, though, uh, is coming up again this coming Wednesday from 8 p.m. to 9 p.m. Pastor Harold will have a special guest in the healthcare industry. And they're going to come together to share about life, answer questions, and even pray for you. Uh, We're all uh, asking that you would invite your friends and your family, your children. Sit and join us as we uh, get a chance to just chat, ask questions, and hear uh, about what's going on at our church. Our third announcement is our monthly prayer meeting. As we continue to connect uh, virtually, we're going to be having our monthly prayer meeting uh, this Coming month in April, uh, on April 3rd at 7.30 p.m., it's going to be on our YouTube channel. If you need prayer, again, we ask that you would let us know of your prayer requests by sending it either through our online ChristCentralSC.com slash prayer or by emailing our office. And I want you to know that during this time, I'm sure many of us have a lot of different feelings and thoughts. And I'm sure maybe you're wondering... um, if there was someone that could be praying for you, um, whether it's a fear, whether it's a concern, whether it's a friend you have that's going through something, uh, we really want to be praying for you. We're not just saying that. And uh, we're calling out names to the Lord. We're praying for families. We're praying for people who are first responders and healthcare workers. And uh, we just want to let you know that we love you. And even though we can't be face to face, um, we're going to be praying for you and lifting your name before the Father. For additional announcements, including our upcoming Essentials classes that's going to be offered online, as well as our parenting webinar, please visit our website at ChristCentralEC.com and sign up for our weekly e-newsletter. 
And you can also follow us on Facebook, Instagram, YouTube, and Spotify. Um, You know, as a pastor and as a father and as a husband, um, I just want to speak to you as a church family. The the COVID-19 virus has impacted all of us, both locally and globally. But what do we do when we experience something like this? Trying to praise God during these times might be difficult. It might be difficult to find things to really be thankful for. And I think we're all waiting for things to return to normal. But however long that takes, uh, I hope that we will apply what we heard from God today through Pastor Harold that reminds us and each other to praise him even when it seems difficult to do so. David writes in Psalm 42, Why are you downcast, O my soul? And why are you in turmoil within me? Hope in God, for I shall again praise him, my salvation and my God. You know, there are days when I have to remind my soul, praise him, look to him, hope in him. And I hope you'll do that and help each other to do that. God bless and have a great rest of the week.